In this lesson, we'll learn how to create and animate our own SVG filters. They can be applied to hover, scroll, or anything we'd like. They can be applied to regular HTML elements, and we'll be using this visual builder to customize them to whatever we'd like. Let's get started. So for this lesson, we'll be using this SVG filter visualizer. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. We can combine any of these different filters to create some pretty unique effects. Let's start off with this turbulence filter. We'll drag it onto the page and we can choose between these different types here. This frequency sets the size of our texture. So if we increase this, it's becoming really small. Whereas if we decrease this, our texture actually becomes much larger. This sets the detail on it. Right now it's really blurred, but if we increase this, we start to see more detail in our texture. And this just applies a different random texture, so it's not going to adjust size or detail, but we can actually just change a different random texture out. Any of these numbers are animatable in GSAP. So we could animate really quickly between different texture types, or we could do uh, size or detail or anything else. Now right now we're scaling size in both X and Y, but we could set just the X here, and now it's stretching more on the X. And if we were to distort this image, we'd see more fragments hanging off the side because this is where it's scaling towards. Or we could leave the X alone and then instead scale on the Y, and that would stretch it out in this direction instead. But for now, I'll leave these both pretty much as even. Now we can add other things on top of this turbulence, like maybe we're, we could add some lighting and that would create some highs and low points, some real depth that we can control there. Um, and that can be used to create mockups and displace text on it and create some really neat effects. But for now, we're just going to use um, some displacement. So we'll add displacement to basically scatter our image into fragments. And we want this uh, turbulence here to be what controls that. Now we can name this whatever we want. And we'll go ahead and feed it into our displacement here. And we want to connect this turbulence to the source graphic which is just the um, text or image that we're applying our SVG filter to. So once we have that set, everything looks normal so far, but once we start to scale this displacement, it's going to scatter the image based on our turbulence that we have set, and larger number, it appears more scattered there. And we can also choose on the x-axis, do we want to affect the RGB or A, um, so right now it's affecting the transparency of the image. We could affect maybe the greens in the image more on the X and maybe on the Y we affect more of the blue layer. And depending on what we choose here, we can create some different looking effects. And so now we can animate this scale, maybe when we scroll into view or on hover or whatever we want to do there. And we can have that set here. I'm going to displace this a little bit more, I think, on the X. And let's just see now if we increase the scale, it starts to become more liney. So there's a lot we can um, do here, and it's just playing with these numbers to get something that feels right. I think this feels a little bit better. So I'll reset the scale to zero, and let's just copy this SVG and head to Webflow. Under Webflow Apps, let's launch the SVG Import app, and we'll click into this box and hit Command-V to paste our SVG. And let's go ahead and move the filter directly into our SVG. We'll delete this unneeded element. And our filter here has an ID. And this is how we apply this filter to other elements. So let's give it a unique ID like image filter. And let's go ahead and we want to hide this SVG because it's taking up space. I'll create a class that I can use for any future filters. And I'll just call this SVG filter. And we'll want to go ahead and set any of our SVG filters to display none throughout the site. Now we can add in a div to apply this filter to, or really any element, and we can name it whatever we'd like. I'll just go ahead and call this my image wrap, and I'll go ahead and give this a custom property, and I'll apply a filter. We'll do URL, open and close parentheses, and then we pass in the ID of the filter we want to apply. In this case, ours is called image filter. So now that we have that set, any child we add inside this div will automatically be filtered because the parent has the filter set. So if we just open up our filter, go to the displacement, and maybe we up the scale, notice how it's affecting everything inside of this image wrap now because that image wrap is connected to the filter. 
Now I'm gonna move this heading out. Let's say we have two of these images and whenever we hover an image, we want to displace only that image. Well, because these are connected to a single ID, to a single filter, then if we edit this one filter, what it actually does is it affects all images connected to that filter. So we would have to duplicate this filter for every image and change out the ID it's connected to for every image, which is just very tedious. So we're going to handle that in a, uh, just an automatic way with JavaScript. But one thing I will do is turn this SVG filter into a component and I'll call this one my image filter. And that way, if we decide to go into this SVG later and tweak any of its settings, it'll update everywhere we're using that component. We don't have a bunch of one-off uh, components. So I'll set the scale back to zero for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to move that image filter into the image wrap. And that way we can easily connect these two. So that way, if we duplicate this image wrap, we'll have a unique image filter for each image wrap. Next, let's set up our heading filter. And for this, we'll need to use a color matrix, which is one of the more complex filters, but it's important for a lot of effects we create. So I'll try to explain it in a clean way. So here, our image is colored because of this. Let's go ahead and reset everything to zero. And we want to get back to the original colors of this image. So here we have a black box. And when I reset this, it's transparent. So now to restore to original colors, we'll just add ones all the way down here on an angle. And once we have that set, this is our normal image state. So each of these rows here represent a color from RGBA. The first row is for red, second row is for green, then we have a row for blue and a row for transparency. So if I dial up the strength of this red row, uh, we start to have more red in our image like so. And we also have these columns based on R, G, B, and A, with the last just being the strength of the whole row. And so if I were to increase this, what we're doing is taking the greens in the image and making them more red, because we're adjusting this on the red row, and this is the green column. If we were to take the blues in the image and make them more red, we might get a different look here. Now on this green row here, we're not taking the reds and, and making them more green or doing anything like that. We're just leaving the reds normal. And then we're giving green its full strength. We're not making it like super strong or anything. And we're not touching the blues and making them more green. Um, and on the blue row, we're not adjusting the reds or the greens. We're leaving them normal and the blue just gets its full strength. Then we come over here to opacity. We're not turning down the opacity of the reds or any other color, but we can adjust the opacity of the full image, make it half opacity like so. And then what's kind of strange is we can increase the opacity strength. So if I do plus 25%, we're now at a 75% opacity image. Or if I subtract 25%, now we're at a 25% opacity image. So this is gonna come in handy when we start combining effects. And what we'll notice, let's go ahead and switch this to text. And let's go ahead and add in our uh, Gaussian blur, like so. And what we'll want to do is just start to blur this text a lot. And we'll just blur it out like that. And we'll want to feed this blur into the color matrix. So we'll just connect these two filters. And now what we can start to do is we can decrease the opacity, of course, of the text. Or we can increase it above one. And once we start to increase it above one, notice how it starts to actually get a little bit like graffiti. It's like overflowing. It's very feathered though, but we can make that much stronger. In fact, I'll go all the way up to 14. And so now we have some bubble text here, but the edges are really soft and we might want to harden that a bit. So what we can do is actually decrease the strength of this opacity. And because it's feeding into the blur, it starts to make the edges harder. And if we start increasing this number more and more, we get harder edges and it creates a really unique effect here. So what happens when we start to decrease this blur or even increase it is that the text eventually fades away like into little clouds and it's just disappearing. And the rate at which that happens is based on the strength of this number here. So if we increase that strength, we'll notice we have even fewer particles here. Um, so we can really start to dial in things like this, how it looks and what we want it to do. And we can adjust where it actually blurs from. So right now we're blur blurring both directions, but we could of course go ahead and blur just on the um, just on the Y like so. And that way it goes this way. 
and or we could blur i'll set this to zero we could blur just on the x and then our text would fade away um off to the sides like this into lines which is kind of interesting too so we can create some really unique uh, different types of effects here so for now i'll just set the blur to zero and zero across the board and let's go ahead and copy this and bring it to webflow so let's go ahead and paste in our svg and we'll go ahead and move the filter directly into the svg we'll delete this unneeded element we'll give the filter a unique id like heading filter and once we have that set let's go ahead and give a class to the parent of the svg and heading we'll give this a class of heading wrap and under custom properties, we'll give it a property of filter. It will pass in URL and we'll add in the ID that we're looking for. So heading filter, and that should connect this div to the correct filter. And let's also give this SVG the class we're using across all our SVG filters that just hides it. And we can go ahead and in this SVG, we'll select the blur and just test this out. So we don't need to blur the X and Y separately. Let's just try 15 and that blurs it, we can do 10, um, we can pass in anything, and that's just going to blur our heading there. So let's go ahead and save this SVG filter in case we want to use it across other headings, and we'll just name this heading filter in a component, and now we can animate it. So first I'm going to run this script that automatically gives each SVG a unique ID instead of us having to do that manually. So it's going to loop through each of the SVG filter classes we applied to our SVGs. It's going to grab the parent div and assign it a new filter. What we had applied under custom properties will now be replaced. And then it's going to find the actual filter element inside our SVG and assign it a new ID. And so if we go ahead and run this, we'll notice that our heading has a filter ID of zero. Um, the first image has filter ID one, second image has filter ID two. And it doesn't matter how many elements we add and how many filters they have, it's always just going to give them unique IDs. In fact, if we open up this heading and open up the SVG, we'll notice that the actual filter element inside it has a matching ID to the parent div. So those will always be synced up. And what this allows us to do is if we open up this image and maybe adjust our filter, and maybe we want to adjust the scale, now it's only going to affect the one image that it's connected to, whereas before in Webflow, doing this would apply to every image. So now we can just select any attributes we want to animate. We're going to animate this scale attribute to something like 100. We could also choose to maybe animate this seed attribute if we want, or even this other attribute here. So we have all these different attributes we could choose, and we would just copy the attribute name if we want to animate it. So what we'll do is start by looping through each image wrap, so that way the same interaction applies to every one of the images we have with this class. And then inside this image wrap, we're going to find our SVG that has this class of SVG filter. And we're going to create a GSAP timeline that's paused until we're ready to hover over the image. And then what we're going to do is inside this SVG, we're going to find the scale attribute, the element with that attribute, and we'll animate that scale from 0 to 100. And then we can plug any other attribute name we want. So we could take this seed and we could animate the seed here. And maybe it goes from one to six like that. And we could also continue this, just copy it and add any other attribute names we want here. So I could just paste this in, change the attribute name in these three places and adjust the starting and ending value here. In this case, though, we're just going to animate the scale, but this is how we would add other attributes to our timeline if needed. Now, whenever we hover over this image wrap, we're going to play, and whenever we hover out, we'll just reverse our timeline. So if we run this, the same timeline should work for each image on our site. We just hover it, and it's only affecting the related image. For our heading, this is the attribute name we're going to animate, and we can animate it to something like 100 to really blur it. So let's go ahead and copy this attribute name. We're going to be looping through our heading wrap and finding the SVG inside this heading, and we're going to create a timeline that automatically plays. It'll take one second long with this ease. And the attribute inside of our SVG that we want to animate is this one here. So we'll go ahead and paste it in. And in this case, we're going to animate from 100 to 0 so it becomes clear 
whenever we load the page. So if we run this, it's gonna start blurred and it just animates in nicely. We could also put this on a loop. So here we have a timeline that repeats infinite number of times and yo yo true means it'll play forwards then backwards. It'll keep going back and forth. And then it's gonna animate this heading from a blur of two to a blur of seven. So we'll just see it constantly just kind of moving there. I'll include the code for this version on the second page of the clonable. And this is uh, how goo effects are made with SVG filters as well. And of course, we could trigger this on scroll into view with GSAP scroll trigger. We could also connect it to GSAP observer if we want to base it on velocity. There's all kinds of ways we can trigger these SVG filters.